welcome back to the Bearcat Cincinnati Dynasty, folks. Um, I didn't try to do a nice stupid accent, and yes, I did do it backwards on purpose. Um, today's doubleheader was supposed to be versus Tulsa, but I simulated that game. So instead of Tulsa and Butler, it's going to be Butler to lean. Now let's have a look for the, um our game versus Tulsa, and let's here's the recap. So the game was way closer than I thought it was going to be. And we still won the game anyway as we won 69-61 on our home court. Um, easily player for us was Dre Drexel as he had 27 points, 4 steals, and 2 assists. And James Small had 17 points, 7 rebounds, and 1 steal off the bench. Kind of impressive. And then Hodges didn't have like a fantastic scoring game. But he almost had a double-double as he had 14 points, 9 assists, and 2 steals. And easily for Tulsa, it was easily carried by Jefferson as he had 20 points, 13 rebounds, and 2 blocks. We are now 6-3, and three, and we definitely have a winning record as Tulsa is going to be home versus Marshall next game as we are going to be at Butler. And for our second time versus the ranked team, we will be wearing alternate jerseys as Butler is going to be wearing their classic home uniforms. Butler is undefeated, so we are going to be trying them to give them their first L of the season. And hello and welcome here to um Hankel Fieldhouse. What a weird name. And here in Indianapolis as the six and two not six and two. Six and three Cincinnati Bearcats are taking on the undefeated ten and O Butler. Um here's the starting lineups as we have Haywood, Mills, Drexel, Hodges, and Holland at the center. And um actually Leon Simmons in real life is actually Gordon Hayward, just for your info. Um because it's like translated names and we are definitely going to be having to capitalize on three pointers in tonight's game and the start right before tip off and yeah we lose terrific way to start off the game and i don't know why the center's out there dribbling but that's weird right at butler university right there and geez that's close to half court and they're just passing the ball wasting the clock as the center hits a fadeaway and it's a foul on jason holland and this is a not good not so good way as Pitts hits it. And another hook shot and we're already down by five. This is terrible. But Devin Haywood is in the paint as he easily scores the layup. But Hodges hits the deep dagger as we just come back and they take the lead as they hit a short layup. And Hodges just does a crazy post riser and Drexel hits it as we're tied 9-9. And Drexel, I don't know how he made that shot. And it's 11-11 now as Drexel pulls it up from deep. As we are up by three. And yeah, they hit a fadeaway, but we we're still up by one. And now make it four. As Drexel hits another deep three. As Hodges hits it from almost half court. Oh my. And then Mills somehow makes that. Hodges is just, just making crazy shots. As Butler goes in for the layup right there. As Mills step back three right in his face. As Drexel dunks. Jesus, the fastest way to get 30 point performance in like a minute. We hit a dagger, and yeah, it's been one minute of being commentating, commentating, and yeah, it's halftime as we are up 36 21, as we are 55% from beyond the arc. Um, we pass it off, and we pass it to Hodges, as then we pass it to Mills. Um, and terrible pass, but Mills somehow gets it back, and then we find Mills, then it hits the Crockett as Haywood. Takes a three and misses the three as it's rebounded by Pitts. And then um, Simmons just dribble, dribbles it out as Drexel tries to attempt the steal. And Haywood is trying to do lockdown defense. Fakes it and feeds it to the power forward as he gets... Oh, he misses a layup. The point guard misses the layup and then the power forward gets the rebound. And then Haywood is in for the layup. Don't leave Hodges open as he hits a three. And it's Haywood right now. Could have been a foul. But it wasn't. And then the point guard for Butler gets in the paint. And then Mills hits the layup. Drexel. Nice fade away in mid-range range, mid range, range. And jeez. What a posterizer by Drexel as Hodges hits a three. And yeah, this is when we start taking the lead a little bit further than usual. As Haywood then Drexel hits a deep dagger. We find Haywood as he hits like the deepest mid-range you can. 
And yeah, Haywood is just shooting. Hodges is in the paint as he does a sky hook. And the backup point guard, Dumont, hits a three-pointer as he's in for the action as Drexel pulls a dagger. And the win by 20 hit a three-point buzzer beater in their face by Hodges as we just easily take advantage of this Butler team. As this is the first loss of the season as we won 84-54. We won by 30 points on their home court. Um... Easily player the game for us was Hodges as he had 29 points, 4 blocks, 5 rebounds. Then Drexel had 22 points, 5 assists, and 4 rebounds. And Haywood had 3 blocks, 3 steals, and 18 points. Um, If I had to give a player the game for Butler, I'll give it to Pitts as he had 15 points, 6 rebounds, but he had 8 turnovers. And Patterson had 15 points, 5 rebounds, and 3 assists. Next game, Butler is um, starting conference play as they are home versus Illinois Chicago as we are going to be at Tulane to round off our non-conference play. So basically, my computer was acting up and um, the first half of the Cincinnati game was not appearing on my editing program. So um, the only part that I was able to actually see editing-wise was the second half. So... um. Here's the recap on the first half. Um, we are winning 43-20. Um, Drexel is having a career night as he has 26 of our 43 points. And Tulane's top leading scorer was Durham as he had 8 points. And yes, by the title, this is the game where Drexel breaks college basketball history. But you'll find out and let's get straight into it. So Tulane will be getting the ball at the first, at the beginning of the second half as we won the tip off in the earlier game. And you you would really wish that you would be able to see geez what a block by Holland right there. But as you can see by the footage, you are really gonna wish that you saw the whole entire game as Drexel is just gonna be making crazy amount of points. And remember, ooh, Hodges in the paint. And Drexel hits it from long range. He already had 26 points going into halftime. And geez, Tulane with the dunk in the paint. As Holland gets a layup right there. And then, ooh, Holland almost blocked that. But the Tulane point guard gets it. And then this is right about when, when Drexel catches fire. As Haywood hits the mid-range. But bam, Drexel none. Hodges, bam. Drexel from Curry range. One. Drexel with the step back, two. And then layup by Tulane. Bam, three for Drexel. Bam, four for Drexel. Bam, five for Drexel. And then, yeah, five straight shots for Cincinnati that are made by Drexel. As a nice fadeaway by Tulane right there. As Drexel, almost six. And then Drexel, another curry range shot. As he hits it again, Drexel is just bombing threes back to back and they ain't stopping them as Tulane thinks they can hit a three and yeah Drexel hits another one in their face and yeah that's how the game ends and you're not gonna believe it Drexel leads Cincinnati as Cincinnati leaves one 101 to 49 and Drexel drops 70 points 70 points um, he also had five assists and two steals. According to NCAA.com, he would be second all-time in the highest individual scoring performances. Number one is Kevin Bradshaw from the United States International versus Loyola Marymount in 1991 as he had 72. Drexel would be number two as he was 70. And number two... Now number three is Pit Pistol Pete has he had 69 in 1970 versus Alabama. Give a round of applause to Dre Drexel. But also, besides Dre Drexel, Hodges did have 17 points, four rebounds, and two blocks. And Holland, even though he only had five points, he did do get a lot of boards. He has 13 rebounds and three blocks. Um Tulane was carried by Wynn and Durham as Durham had six points. 3 assists and 6 turnovers, as Wynn had 12 points, 6 rebounds, and 1 block. And then Gallimore just cost him. He had, even though he had 3 blocks, he had 7 points and 7 turnovers. 
Um, Cincinnati is now seven and three, and Tulane is now four and nine. Um, this was our last game of the non-conference. So our first ever conference game, coached by Travis Kings, will be at Villanova as Tulane also starts conference play, home versus Houston. And a quick recruiting update. The second best player in the whole recruiting, Cameron Howard, has officially committed here to Cincinnati. Fantastic. And then Jamal Harper, we are second on and, um... Yeah, and I decided to offer him a scholarship. We did not do a scholarship for Cameron Howard, so we're going to give our first ever scholarship to Jamal Harper, and we're going to conduct a phone interview with the assistant coach of Jamal Harper. So, next episode, we will be taking on number 8 Villanova as we kick off um, conference play. Um, Wait, hold on, let me... Yeah, so I just want to simulate, so I saved it. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, share, subscribe, and like always, have a good day. Peace out.